Hello, hi guys, welcome to the channel. I hope you are not doing great and I'm also doing good. On the video that I have posted, a uh, replay for the subscriber question, I got a huge response uh, and also I got uh, so many requests uh, and so many questions uh, to clarify. Out of which, I'll pick the interesting ones and I can try to discuss uh, those topics with you. So one of the subscribers has posted this fact, I'm following your videos and learned mostly uh, can you please make a video on the below topics as mostly asking questions in the interviews now and it will be helpful to me thank you thank you for following and supporting our channel so when it comes to the questions and he had posted the first two questions is jdbc connectors and oltp and olap and uh, flat map map and flat map and task and group by key and reduce by key and why we are using only aws emr to run the pi spark okay let's take the first question here the jdbc connectors so jdbc connectors are nothing but a java database connectivity so these connectors are these, these are like a connectors like a bridges uh, to connect to the relational database uh, systems and to read the data into the spark or to write the data back to the uh, databases so these are like a connector so each uh, relational database has its own driver like JDBC for MySQL, Postgres, or even, uh, you know, uh, even for the cloud as well, we have uh, 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 drivers as well. So we need to download the drivers and we need to install the drivers in our application, also in our cluster. And then we have to execute the job. Uh, the syntax I can give you in the top of the screen. So let's try to understand what is main day. Okay. So how we are going to read uh, data. The syntaxes will helpful to read the data from the data JDBC uh, source. So JDBC source majorly we have like Spark dot read dot and we can give the format as JDBC and apart from uh, regular file system we need to provide some special uh, permissions uh, I mean special things uh, nothing but the URL so URL will be the standard format like we can use the JDBC PostgreSQL and uh, host and the port and also we can give you the username and the password and also we need to specify the tables on the databases so like which database that you wanted to and what tables that you wanted to do. You can read via the table name or you can read using the SQL query as well. And at last you can give the dot load so that it will it will connect to the database and it will like, uh, load the data to the Spark data frame. Even when we are writing it, uh, write dot, uh, you know, data frame dot write dot, uh, you can give the format as like JDBC and the JDBC URL and you need to give the username and the password and uh, you have to, you know, uh, give the configuration so the replace like, like what is the save mode and all those things so once you do all those things it will try to load the data back to the relational database management systems okay so the interesting thing, uh, thing that you wanted to understand out here is like uh you know the best practices i can say so as part of the best practice uh, practices uh best practices like if you see uh if you didn't specify anything by default it will use only one core and one thread to read the data or to write the data to the relational database management system so mostly our uh, tables rdbms tables are like uh, large tables and it has a millions and billions of the records so using only one thread it's uh, the job is too slow to read all the data right so to improve the performance we need to make utilize of the parallelism so for that we have some configuration that is nothing but the partition column like on which column that we can take the partition so mostly for the partition column you can give the primary key uh, column in the database okay you can use the primary key column from the database to use this partition column the next thing is we need to specify the what is the lower bound and upper bound so that will be used to segregate your data for the multiple threads like usually we can we can also have another property like number of partitions so if you specify the number of let's say you take the lower bound as one upper bound as thousand and you taken the 10 as like uh, number of partitions so in that case each partition can read the data 100 records so that all 10 threads will connect it to the database and will read the data so at a time right up to time 10 threads will be used to pull the data from database to the spark if you didn't specify this configuration by default it will connect only one thread and one thread will try to read all the data row by row row by row row by row till all the thousand rows so this is one thing that you need to remember also when you are writing the data better you can write the data in a batch wise we have some configuration like batch size we have to use that batch size to write the data to the database otherwise it will use only one thread and to write all the data to the table it will take a lot of time so that your job will be damn slow 
So I think in the interview point of view, you need to remember these points. So we'll take a next question. That is the difference between OLTP and OLAP. So OLAP, OLDP, I can give you on the screen that what is the full form of it. Like OLTP is nothing but online transaction processing. OLAP is nothing but online analytical processing. OLTP is like to run the day-to-day -day operations, like regular operations. Let's say in a simple term, if you take the banking system, so in the banking system, daily a customer can go to a bank, either can withdraw the money or deposit the money. Two, two things that he can do, right? So all this transaction will be handled by the OLTP. So we can call it as a OLTP because that is a day-to-day -day operation. Okay, so but when you connect it to the internet system and when you pull out the report like last one year, last one month and last of six months, so these reports that we are getting from the internet banking system, right? So these reports can we can get it from the OLAP, which is nothing but online analytical processing. So where we'll take the data from the OLTP system and we'll process it, clean it, and we can store it in the OLAP. So the most purpose of the OLTP is to run the day-to-day -day business. Okay, day-to-day -day business. Because in the day-to-day -day business, we have to do lot of updates and deletes and even inserts as well. But in case of the OLAP, we, 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 there is no necessity that we can do lot of inserts and updates. Instead, we'll update the data very rarely. Okay, maybe once in a day or uh, once in a month, once in a week or so in OLAP. But in OLTP, we have to update the data on every second, on every second and minute as per the transaction okay that's the reason uh, to support OLTP we have it RDBMS databases like Postgres MySQL uh, you no know, all those uh, MySQL MS SQL so all those databases those databases are for OLTP mate and for OLAP we have some other databases something like uh, we have a Teradata uh, Netiza and uh, some other you know, warehouses. So the name, it starts with a warehouse. So these are for OLAP. And when it comes to the cloud, we have like uh, Synapse and uh, Azure, or even Redshift and B Be Cool, BigQuery. So these are for the OLAP. Okay. So now I hope you got some uh, clarity on it. Really how the flow is, first uh, we'll load the data to the OLTP. It will generate our update, whatever the updates. And we'll pick it up that update and we'll load it into the OLAP databases. So this is how the typical process. Okay. So I hope I hope you got a clarity on this one.